All right, so in this video, we're going to model a spider. So the spider references are posted online for this. Um, I've got a folder here with exactly the ones I'm going to use. So I've got, uh, you could use any of the photo spider references, but we're going to use the spider anatomy for the top down view and the spider leg joint to model the legs after. So I'll keep this open. I'll come back to it in a minute. First thing to check, we're going to model to scale. So I'm going to go to unit setup and we're checking US standard feet and inches for this one. I'm going to click OK and we're going to create a box which is going to be two feet by two feet by two feet. We're going to spherify the box, uh, but this time for length, width, and height segments, we're going to go with six, six, and six. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to hit F4. <clears throat> And we'll center the box, make sure X, Y, and Z are set to zero. Gonna go to the modify panel and add the spherify modifier. So I'm gonna hit S to jump to spherify. And once we add that, we can just leave it at 100%. And then convert this to editable poly. And I'm gonna maximize my viewport here. Okay, if I click off of this and turn off edges you can see smoothing groups are not set okay we'll deal with smoothing groups later but I'll just grab these all for now so just select all the polygons and if you scroll down in the modifier list here you're gonna find your polygon smoothing groups section I'm gonna hit clear all set it all to one and then that's all we have to do for now <clears throat> all right so I'll hit F4 to turn the edges back on you can hold shift we'll make a copy Okay, so we'll make a copy of this, and this copy will scale down a bit. Okay, so rather, you can scale this because we're going to attach it and all that, but we'll just, the safe way to scale things when you're rigging is if you're going to scale your mesh, select the element, and you can safely scale the element without messing up your transform. But ultimately, this is getting attached back to here. So I'm just blocking in the shape for the body and the head, and then we'll do the legs around here. So at this point, this is roughly what our spider size is going to be. So before I continue with the modeling, I'll set up those reference images. So I'm going to hit M to open up the material editor. I'm just using standard materials. It doesn't matter if you're using standard or physical materials. But I'm going to open up and start dragging these in. Okay, so I'm going to take my spider anatomy, drag it into one slot, take the leg drawing, drag that into another, and then whatever photo references you want, just drag those into their own as well. And just make sure show shaded material and viewports turned on. It should be turned on by default, but if it's not, just turn it on so that when we apply these to a plane in the viewport, it'll show up. Okay, so let's make planes that we can throw these on. So I'm going to make the ground plane first. So I'm going to go to the modify panel, create a plane like this. We don't need segments, so length and width segments will be set to one and one. Just right click on the spinners to reset it. Um, I'll center it for now, but we're going to have to shift it around after. And then I'll just drag this one onto here, and then you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I can scale this out. It's okay to scale your reference image because we're not skidding it. So you can scale it out and eye it up like this. If you want it to be the exact size of the image that you brought in, you can always go back to your folder, right click on the image, go to properties, and in the details section, you're going to see the dimensions. So this is 571 by 403. So I would say, uh, you know, 5.7 by, by 4 if you're trying to punch in a value. And just to show you what I mean is the width here. If I put in something like 5.7, it'll snap to whatever it wants there because it's feet and inches by four. If I did that the right way, let's do it the other way. <clears throat> okay, so I did it backwards. Um, that's closer to, we'll just knock this down to 5.7. That's closer to the aspect ratio of the actual image. 
Okay, so again, you could scale it, it doesn't matter, you can eye it up because we're just using it as quick reference to line things up. So I might actually scale it out a bit just to make the spider a bit bulkier and just make the back end round in the image. Okay, so just like that, it's just reference. And then I'm going to rotate it around because I'm modeling with the legs facing forward. So I'll right click on the rotate tool, set the Z to 180 negative 180 and then in the top view make sure you're in the top view I'm gonna hit F3 I'm gonna line this up in the middle here okay so I want this to be roughly in the middle if you want you can go to hierarchy effect pivot only and move your pivot over to the back end of the spider and then you can just scale it up from there so I want the image to match the size of the actual spider mesh. So I'm just lining it up to the spider mesh. Okay, so I'm just looking at the back end to help me line this up. Once it's lined up, I'll drop it in its own layer. All my reference images are going to go in uh, their own layer. So I'll set up the other ones first, and then I'll come back and combine them. Okay, so that's right where I need it. Now I have that reference for when I set up the legs. Um, if I modeled anything else on the head, I'm going to keep it pretty simple for the video. But if I did add extra details, it's all here. So I'll hit P to go to perspective. And we'll set up another plane. So the other planes I set up, I'm going to end up putting them in the side view. And just to make it easier, if you hit L to go to the left view, hit F3 for shaded mode. I'm gonna go up and create a plane like this. This I'll throw the leg on and to scale this one I'll just move it down towards the spider like this. Okay so this is roughly where the spider leg comes from. So the spider leg is gonna be modeled from the bottom base area here. <clears throat> so if this were the leg uh, reaching the ground, then I can scale this down until it makes sense. So we'll scale it down a bit more. Be something like this. And again, it's just reference. We're going to model our leg from this. So our model will match this drawing pretty close. And then we can move the leg over and we can change it and scale it how we want. But this is going to give us a pretty accurate representation of a spider leg and you can see we're going to put in edge loops at each joint to give it the full articulation that the spider would need and then when we create our cat rig after we'll just make sure that we have enough bones to cover each section so if you're looking at this drawing you can see it's it has lines and the points here so between each point would represent a bone okay so each joint these blue dots would represent a joint that could bend so we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bones if you include the claw. <clears throat> All right, so let's just move this up out of our way for now. We're gonna, I'm going to show you a trick to make modeling the leg easier. So we'll pull it back here for now. Uh, from here, you could hold shift and drag a copy. Holding shift, dragging another copy. And then we've got our other two reference image planes. Okay, so you can see that one's a little skewed. Just gonna eye it up like this. It's just for reference. Okay, so it's just for fun, really. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be the perfect scale. We're just putting it in there for reference. So just eye it up. Okay, so these drawings, these anatomy references, we're gonna use those to scale like this. Now that we have all these, let's hold control and select all these reference image planes. I didn't name them, doesn't really matter. We just want to put them in a layer and keep them in the layer together. So I'm going to freeze them too so I can't move them, but before I freeze them I want to make sure they don't turn gray when I freeze them. So with them all selected you're going to right click, go to object properties, and then in object properties you can turn off show frozen in gray. Okay, so if you turn that off and then click OK, you'll be able to freeze these and they won't turn gray. We'll still be able to see them. But before we do that, let's drop them into a layer. 
So you can open up Layer Explorer and we will take what's selected and create a new layer. Okay, I'm displaying my Layer Explorer as Layers, not Hierarchy, so make sure that's on. Then I'm going to hit plus to create a new layer and I'll just call it REF for Ref, Reference. And then you can actually freeze the layer from here. But then make sure you go back to the default layer so we're working in this layer. If I create new objects, it'll drop them in whatever layer is active. Okay, so this layer is active. And I'll click OK or close that. Okay, so now these are all locked. I can't move them. can close this. And we can continue to model. So I'm going to click the back end. I'll hit P for perspective, Z for zoom. Okay, I always press those two together when I'm trying to zoom in. And we want to attach these together. Okay, so if you want to double check first, you can go to the top view again. Just make sure you've scaled this out. Okay, so this is just reference. It doesn't have to match this exactly. But that's close enough. So you could still, if you need to, you can go back into Editable Poly and scale this out a bit if you need to. Just make sure it fits. And I'm just going to pull it away from the back side a bit. So what we're going to do is go to Perspective. And I'll take the back side and I'm going to use Attach under Edit Geometry. So I'm going to Attach and then choose the front part. And then turn Attach off. And then if I go to the left view by hitting L, I'm going to hit F4 so my edged faces are turned on. And I'm just going to take the polygons in between here and delete them. Okay, that's going to leave two open borders. So if we go back to Perspective by hitting P, you can see the open borders there. So I'm just going to bridge them together so it's all one piece. And you can actually take this front piece and move it a little closer before you do this, just to make it easier. But then I'm going to take the border here. I'll use the bridge tool and then you can click from one edge and then click to the same edge on the other side there and it bridges it together. Okay, so the only thing with this is I wouldn't mind having another edge loop in there. So if you use bridge settings, you can hold control, turn off bridge first, make sure border selected, hold control to select both borders that you want to bridge together, and then click on bridge settings. And it'll do the same thing, it'll bridge, but there's other options in here now. So I can add segments, which I'm going to do, I'm going to add one segment in there. Um, I can go through and taper, I can smooth this out, twist it. So if you add twists, it'll twist that around. We don't want that though. So I'm going to click OK. So we have the segment in there. And then our smoothing groups are getting messed up as we model. So at the end, we'll select the whole spider and set the smoothing groups back to one. So don't worry about that for now. But what I'll show you next is how to smooth this area out using vertex painting. Okay, so we're going to turn on vertex. We're going to go to the very bottom and you'll see paint deformation. If you open that up, you can push and pull. This is essentially like sculpting. Or you can use relax, which is kind of like smoothing. If you hit relax, as long as you don't have any vertices selected, it'll paint or sculpt on the entire thing. If I have certain vertices selected, it'll lock it to those selected verts. Okay, so I have nothing selected, so it'll sculpt on the whole thing. If you open up the brush options, this window, this old school looking window will pop up. You can turn on mirror and you can choose, it should be set to X axis, so it's going to mirror this. And then you can change the size of the brush here. So if you pull this down and then check in the viewport, you can see it update. So it doesn't update till after you've pulled the value down. But now you can see it there. And then the strength probably should start with 0.5 and work your way up from there. But then I can go around here and just start to relax this together. Okay. So if you want to right click, you can isolate selection. So it'll isolate this. And I'll go back to the relax tool. Just kind of push these areas out a bit. Okay. So just kind of blends things together. When we set the smoothing groups, it, there won't be this hard edge in here. So I'm just going to do it like that for now, just to kind of 
round out this neck shape. I'll call it neck for now. Um, and then I'll close this, turn off relax, and if you want to push these back together, you can go back to the top here and select polygon. And if I go to the left view, I'll just select all the polygons within here. If you go up to this point here, um, you can use grow and shrink to shrink the selection back. And it's probably just easier to do it like this. And then hit grow, push it back in like that. You can get into soft selection as well if you want to use soft selection, but this, this way is easier. So we'll just keep it like that. And then if you want, you can take the whole thing and you can put everything back to smoothing group one. So I'll hit clear all, put it all in smoothing group one, and just make sure it's blending properly. And then at this point, if I needed to, I could go back to the relax tool and push it around again, but this is good for now. And if you hit F4 to turn off the edges, you can see what it looks like. Yeah, we can throw open subdivision on this later to smooth it out, but for now we're going to keep it fairly low poly like this. This will make a good low poly game model that we can use, but if we need to bump it up, we can always add open subdivision. So I'm going to right click and end isolate, and I'm going to save the file. So I'm just going to go save as, and I'm going to choose a brand new folder for this. So actually I'll just save it in the same one I had before. I'll just call this one Spider Tutorial. And again, save it incrementally so that you can save as you go. So underscore 01, next time I'll hit the plus to save it as 02. And then the next thing we can do is we can just kind of start using soft selection to push and pull areas around. But at this point, we can cut this in half and we can do our mirrored instance modeling. So I'll name the mesh spider. And then to cut it in half, I'm going to hit F to go to the front view. So we're in the flat front view. You can hit F3. And if you don't see the edges, just hit F4 to turn on edge faces again. And then from here, I'm going to take half the polygons and I'm going to delete them. And then we'll take this half here. We'll use the mirror tool up at the top. Okay, so I'm going to click mirror and we're mirroring in the X axis as an instance. All right, so once you mirror the instance, you can click OK. And then what I usually do is put it in see-through mode, so Alt X, and then I freeze it. So I'll right click and freeze selection. Okay, so it's frozen and it's see-through. But now if I make any changes to this side, both sides update at the same time. And then later on we can weld this together. The other advantage of doing it this way is you can always hide that half if it's in your way. But for now this should be good. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll just jump to the left view and start reshaping this a bit. So you can use your reference images. You can shape it however you want. We have the base shapes blocked in and uh, put together. So you can just use these as a guideline. It's up to you how you want to make this. You can be creative with it. But I'm just going to at least elongate the back end and just reshape the front a bit. Okay, So I'll at least make this back part longer like a spider body. And I'll just slope his head down. So to do this, in the left view, I'm going to select some verts along the back here. And we're going to use soft selection. So if you open up Soft Selection, turn on Use Soft Selection, then you can adjust the fall off. So just hold your left mouse button down on the arrows and move your mouse up and down. And then I'm going to zoom out a bit, but I'm going to start pulling this out to reshape it. Okay, so if it's not pulling out enough, you can push the fall off up even further. Kind of pull it out like this. And if it's not pulling enough still, you could grab more vertices. It'll change the soft selection area, but you can kind of reshape it like that. You could grab the top, just kind of shift this whole thing around. So you're kind of sculpting just by grabbing and moving things around. Okay, so that's a more interesting shape already. 
for the spider. And again, you can make it however you want. Now for the front, I'll just kind of take this front side here. Drop the fall off a bit. Just kind of slope it down. Just be careful because it's low poly. We don't want to have weird angled edges in here. Okay, so the bottom, I don't want to mess too much with this. This is where our legs are going to come from. So I'm going to keep it fairly uh, spherical in here. But I might slope the front down a bit. Again, you reshape it however you want. It's totally up to you. Just trying to give it a different shape so it's not completely round. So, yeah, something like this. Maybe even pull the front end in a little bit. There we go. All right. It's good enough for now. I'm going to hit P to go back to perspective. Okay, so it's maybe a little weird looking at the top here, so I might push the side in just a little bit. It's not too bad. All right, so I'm going to change the color of this because I don't like it. So I'm going to open up my material editor and just make a standard gray material. You don't have to do this, but usually I like to throw on just a base standard material. And then I like to take the object and change its color so that I like to change it to black so that the edges are black and it looks nice and clean when I look at it when I deselect it. Okay, so I'm going to save it again. Hit save as and hit the plus because I'm about to create the legs. You can look at this from the top. I'm actually going to shift the back a little bit more. I forgot to taper it in. Okay, so this is where you have to be careful because it's split in half. I don't want it to move the middle in. So if I move this, you can see it starts to overlap. I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to go right to the top view. Okay, and look at it from this angle. So one thing you can do with soft selection is you can turn on edge distance. And with edge distance, I'm going to hit F4 here. You can control how many edges out from the selected vertices the soft selection will affect. Okay, so right now I have it set to one edge. If I set it to two, it's going to reach all the way out here. But if I just select one vertice, you can see if that's set to one, it'll only go out one edge. If I set it to two, it goes out two edges. Okay, so that's one way you can control this type of soft selection. Okay, so this, uh, you have to be at least two edges out if you want to use the fall off. And then I can kind of push this in without affecting that middle edge loop. Okay, so right here, just have to be careful. So I can get it tapered, something like that. Hit P and rotate around. Maybe grab the bottom here. Okay, so if, it, if I'm in the bottom and I'm just pulling it up, I won't need to use edge distance. I can turn that off because I'm just pulling this straight up. Okay, again, that's good enough for now. I'll just hit Control S this time to save over top. Okay, so our legs, we need to create four legs on each side. Okay, I'm not including this little feeler leg. I'm just including the four main legs. And what we can do is we can kind of inset a round area like we would do with uh, creating a character's arms or legs. You can create, I'm going to turn off soft selection, but I'm going to take sections like this. I'm going to figure out where the eight legs can come from. So I could put one here, I could put one here, here, and here. Okay, so even if I start with this one, I'm going to select those polygons and use the inset settings. And I'll just inset this a little bit. Okay, so just enough that I can move these verts around after. And then I'll end up deleting these. Okay, so I'm going to show you a trick to snap this around so that it's perfectly um, round. So you can delete that for now. But then we'll take this side here, inset, delete. Okay, don't worry about how big it is right now because we're going to be snapping it around to, or snapping it around a circle. 
So I'm going to inset this, click OK and delete. Do the same thing here, inset, delete. And I might take these edges at the front and back here, the ones that are really uh, jutting out, up and out. So I'm going to push it down and in like this. Okay, just to straighten it out a bit. So I'll take this one and do the same thing. Okay, so pull it down a bit and then back in towards the body just to keep the curve of the body going. Okay, so that's good enough for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Create panel and under Shapes, we'll create a circle. Okay, so the way we've done this, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides, right? So we're going to create a circle that also has eight sides. So to do that, you can create your circle like this on the ground. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to take the circle and the spider body and isolate them. Okay, so now you can see that circle better. So I'm taking this and going into the modify panel and I can change the radius but if you go under interpolation you're gonna drop your steps all the way down to one. That gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. Okay, so that's gonna these vertices can now be snapped around to these vertices here. So I just want to make sure that this is rotated straight, okay? And I'm going to rotate it up like this. And I'll snap it to 90, negative 90 degrees for now. So we've got something like that. And then I'm going to move this up and get it in close to one of the leg holes. And then from here I can figure out the radius that this needs to be. So I'm going to drop the radius down so that it fits inside that hole. And I might go a little bit bigger than that, but we're going to go around to each one of these and snap the verts. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're going to have a perfectly round area, and then I'm going to use this shape later to model the leg from. And then that way I can take the leg, I'll model the leg over here in the side view, and then we'll move the leg and we'll copy it around and we'll bridge it in here. So the legs will line up perfectly. Okay, so you can take this and you can start anywhere, but I'm going to rotate this so that it's facing the right angle. Okay, so I'm just holding Alt as I rotate around here. Might have to shift this back and forth to get it to line up. And then I'm using my keyboard shortcuts, W, E, and R. Okay, so I'm not scaling it. I'm going to keep it the same size the whole time. But then I'm just going to make sure I can get it to fit in here. So I'm just shifting it around. And then I'll snap the verts to it. So to snap the verts, you're going to select the spider mesh. Turn on vertex. And then you're going to go up here to the snaps toggle. So it's the number three with the little magnet on it. If you right click on that, make sure you're only snapping to vertex. All right and then turn the tool on and if you zoom in here you can click and drag the vertices and they'll snap to the vertices of the circle okay so I'm gonna do that for each one of these and this is how we can create the perfect round shape for the legs to come from just like that okay so that's that one done I'm going to turn off snaps for a minute. I'm going to select that shape again. And I'll just move it over. You don't have to copy it. You can just move it around. And I'll rotate it around. Line it up the same way for this hole back here. Just try to get it as close as you can. So that it'll conform to the body shape. I'm going to switch. When I'm rotating, I'm going to switch this to local. So I can rotate in the local direction of the circle. Just makes it easier. And then once you have it pretty much lined up, I might rotate this back like that. I'm going to select the spider and do the same thing. So I'm just snapping the verts. So 
So we're just forcing a round shape. Okay, so just have to do the other two. Oops, turn off snaps. Keep trying to use the same shortcuts as the Unreal Engine. So again, it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. You want it as close as possible because we can tweak it after, but there'll be less to tweak if we line it up now. And when you're moving this, after you've rotated it, you can move it in the local axis as well, and it makes it easier. Okay, so I'm going to snap this one up. So there we go. Snap, snap, snap. Turn off snaps and move the shape one more time. Okay, so we're almost done with this part. Tweak it a little bit more. All right, that's good enough. And we'll start snapping. Click on a vertex and hit Z. It'll zoom into that vertex. Might make it easier to snap. Okay, so just double check and make sure you actually snapped everything properly. You can see I missed and ended up snapping it to itself. Okay, that'll work. All right, so now we can move on to the leg. So we'll model the leg from this shape. So I'm going to turn off vertex. So what we'll do is we can right click on the rotate tool and switch our coordinates back to view. And for now, you can just set it all back to zero and then we'll rotate it up. Okay, so we're going to have the Y at 90 degrees. This makes it perfectly straight in the side view. And then we can just move it up here like that for now. We're actually going to rotate it again, but I just want to show you what we're about to do. I'm going to right click and end isolate. And I'll go to the left view. So what we're going to do is end up moving this up here and just kind of following the structure of the leg. So I'm going to take this and convert it to editable poly. So it'll fill the face in. If it's black, um, it's probably backwards, so you can just rotate it around so it's facing us. And I'll right click on the rotate tool, make sure it's snapped to negative 180. And then we want to connect this up. So I'm going to connect these vertices up and down here with Control Shift E, or you can hit Connect over here. And then we need to connect across here, but you can't connect over an edge, so we're going to cut. So you just need to find the cut tool and then cut from one vertex to the other and then right click to end cutting and turn off the cut tool okay so that's nice and simple now I'm gonna take this leg and move it up here and we're gonna start from this side so I'm gonna take this and rotate it so that the faces are gonna face the front you can right click on the rotate tool it should be set to 90 and 90 and then I have it selected. It's hard to see now that it's in this view, but I'm going to move it over here so it starts from the very beginning of the leg. And then if you go to the Modify panel, you can just select the polygons. Okay, so I'm just clicking and dragging. I know they're selected, but if you check Perspective, if you don't believe me, there you go, they're selected. So go back to the left view, they're selected. I'm going to hold Shift and start 
extruding. Okay, so you can extrude out the first one like this so that we can scale it up. If you right click on the scale tool, we can use offset screen to help us scale this. And then we're just gonna follow the shape of the spider leg. As you're extruding, you're gonna wanna rotate as well. So I'm just holding shift and I'm extruding out to each joint. And then when I get there, I'm just rotating. Okay, so I'm gonna, for now, I'm just gonna block this in at each joint. And I'll go back to it after. If you right click on the scale tool again, you can keep this open as you're going and you'll be able to taper it. And then I'm gonna hold shift and I'm just gonna quickly block this in for now. So when you get to these angles like this, um, you can kind of pre-cut the three edge loops that we're gonna need. So we need three edge loops at each joint. So when we rig this, we can skin it properly. But I'm just gonna make sure I'm scaling it as I go. I'm gonna add edge loops later back in here to buff this up a bit. But as I'm going around these angles like this, I'm gonna stop here, hold shift, just kinda extrude this in, hold shift again, and there that gives you your three edge loops there. And then I'm gonna hold shift to this side and do the same thing. Okay, so hold shift, rotate, move, hold shift, rotate and move. So again, you don't have to worry too much about the shape. If you don't wanna come back and chamfer these, you can kind of block in the edge loops as you go. So like right here, if I stop here, I know I need an edge loop here, here, and here for this to bend. And then I'll go down to this section here and pull the offset down for the scale. Just relying on my shortcuts quite a bit now to switch between select and move and rotate and scale. Okay, so there's three edge loops again for that joint. I'm gonna scale it from here. I'm using the offset screen so it scales it in each direction. You don't wanna be scaling it in the view and then you go to rotate your view around later and it's just like that meme I posted again. And everything's all messed up. So I'm gonna pull this out to here. Oops. Let's make sure I have that selected again. So this is just the last joint here that goes out to the claw area. And at the end for the claw, I'm just gonna try to straighten it out and then taper it down, something like that. You need to straighten these edge loops out, so you can go back, double click your edge loops, and you can shift them around, and rotate them. Let's try to make sure they're in the middle. Same with this one here. Start to straighten everything out. So in some spots, I didn't add the extra edge loop, so I'll have to go back to those. Okay, some of these I can scale out as well, just to help with the shape. If you hit Alt X, you can put it in see-through mode. Okay, so these were two that I didn't add the three edge loops in. So I'm gonna take that one and just double click, maybe move it so it lines up a bit better in the middle. And then I'll just chamfer this one. If you open up chamfer settings and adjust the chamfer amount, you can just keep it set to uniform and then you can just push the amount out with one segment. Okay, so that'll be good for that. Click OK, I'll do this one. Okay, same thing, make sure they don't overlap at the top. And then I might take that middle edge loop and just scale it down, just to taper these sections in a bit. Okay, so from here, you have your main edge loops blocked in. 
Now it's just a matter of reshaping. So if you want to reshape parts of the leg, like maybe I'll put another edge loop in here. So I just, you can select an edge and hit ring. Or if you're in the left view, you can just click and drag through. It's going to pick up all the edges. And then if you use connect settings, you can add as many segments as you want. And then I can right click on the scale tool and use the offset transform. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. So I'll connect another one up here in the middle somewhere. Scale it out. You can move it if you have to. Okay, so this section's fine. That section's fine. If you want to add that little bump there, you can, but otherwise that section's fine. Here, I'll just put it in. You can also slide this edge over. Okay, so you get something like that instead. Okay, so that's all finished. If you want, you can take all the polygons here and set them to smoothing group one by hitting clear all. Set the smoothing groups to one. And then I'll hit Alt X so it's not see through anymore. Just make sure it's selected first. And then if you turn off your edges, you can see what it looks like. But you can see how quickly we've blocked that in. Okay, so I can go in and add edges again if I want to, like this section here, if you want to make it look more like the drawing. I'd just be missing an edge loop in the middle there. Put it in the center, scale it out a bit, just move it down, something like that. Okay, so that's good enough. So from here, we can take this leg, which is modeled, and if you go to perspective and hit Z, you can see the back is open. So we have an open border there that we can now snap around to the leg sections here. Okay, so before I do that, I'm going to save, save as, hit the plus, and then we'll snap those legs into place. Okay, so if you take your spider leg, uh, you can actually just jump to the left view again. Let's move it down so that the toe area is sitting on the ground like this. And you can see we're going to have to move the spider up. So take the spider and move it up. And you'll have to unfreeze the other half. So if, um, let's see, if I right click and unfreeze all, it's going to unfreeze all the layers if I click yes there. So I'm just going to move this up. So it's going to line up right about there. But I'm going to open up my layer manager and freeze my reference images again. Okay, so I'm going to take this leg and move it over here. And then I'll go to the top view and I'll start rotating and copying this leg around. Okay, so I'm just using the image at the bottom as reference. So I'm just going to roughly line this up. If you wanted to make the spider legs longer, you could go in with like soft selection and you could pull the legs out. It's totally up to you if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that with mine, but if, I, if you did, you could use this. You could even use soft selection and you could pull it's actually probably easier if you select it as polygons like this and then you could use shrink and grow and then if you have soft selection on you can switch this to the local axis and you can just pull it along the length like this okay so again just be careful when you're doing this maybe do it in perspective but you can see you can make the spider legs longer if you want to do it that way i'm just going to keep them scaled the way they were Okay, so they're shorter than the image, but that doesn't bother me right now. I'm going to take them like this. I'm going to hold shift, make a copy. And I'm going to rotate that copy. So it's just going to line up roughly to where they're positioned in the drawing. Again, if you want to resize them, you totally can, but I'm just going to keep them like this. Make them all the same. It'll be easier to rig too if we keep the legs all the same size. And it'll end up looking like this, so that's not too bad. <clears throat> Alright, so the next trick is to get the spider legs in closer. 
to each hole. So you could try to snap them in there, but I'm just going to move them so that they're really close. So if you move them in so that they're almost touching the mesh, then we can just bridge these gaps together. Okay, so I'm going to get them as close as I can by just moving them back and over. And at this point, you should probably switch it to view instead of local so that you're moving it straight back and not shifting it up off the ground. And once we get them kind of lined up to where the holes are, as best we can. Okay, so this one, I'm probably going to rotate out a bit so that it doesn't run into the body. And just line it up like that. Getting it as close as I can. Probably needs to go back a little closer to the body. Same with this one. Okay, so now we'll attach them to the body. Okay, so watch what happens when we attach these to the body. We're going to select the body. I'm going to roll that back up. We're going to click attach and start attaching the legs and then the other side updates as well. So just like that we have a spider sitting here. So now we have to go in here and bridge these together. Okay, so this part might be a little tricky to move around. If you've moved them too close you can still grab the element and you can shift it back a bit. Okay, so it's not too late to make adjustments. You just have to select it as element. Because, yeah, if it's too close, it's going to be a little tricky to get this to bridge properly. So there should be a little bit of a gap in there. And then that makes it easier for us when we go in here and bridge. So I'm going to try to zoom into this border here. Just make sure I have it selected. So this border here and control, hold control, select this border here. You can use bridge settings. And we can add the extra segment like that, but it's going to twist it up. So I'm going to set the segments to just one. And then you can click OK. And then if you want, you can double click this um, edge loop on the inside here. And you can just shift this or rotate it. If you switch it to local, it'll be easier to rotate this but you can kind of fix this area of the model so that it comes out and meets the leg properly. Okay, so this should also give us an extra edge loop here, which I'm going to rotate back a bit. But we kind of want three edge loops at the base of the leg for rigging. So I'm going to make sure I have them in there. Okay, so that, that should be fine, but if you grab this edge here and hit ring, you can connect another edge loop on the side of the body. Just put it right in the middle. It'll just help with the skinning after. Okay, so just have to do the same thing here. I'm going to select the borders. Just hit bridge this time because it'll remember the settings from last time. And then I'm going to take this edge loop, move it up, just kind of reshape it. So it fits in better. Okay, so it's just kind of like our three edge loops that we had for the shoulder of the ball character, if you remember doing that. And we'll connect one here, and then just have two more to do. So shift up, rotate, pull this back, check at the side here, add another loop here, right in the middle like that. Once we get these, we'll apply the smoothing groups again, and it 
and will help blend the legs in better. Pull this up, rotate, push it back. Okay, so it's good enough. And then we'll put this in here. Okay, so if you back out of there, that's the spider legs pretty much done. Okay, so if you take all your smoothing groups around the whole thing, put it all into group one. So hit clear all, group one. You can turn off the edges and just have a look. Okay, so this is what the spider looks like at this point. Okay, so that's all the smoothing groups set up. You could easily add open subdivision to this if you wanted to make it smoother. But I'm going to skin it without open subdivision on. So I'm going to skin it at the low poly mesh. If you wanted to, you could skin it after adding this. You could collapse this and you'll have a poly count like that, which would be totally fine. But I'm just going to keep it low poly and go with this. Because if this is in game, depending on how big it is and we're right now we're working on that side scroller but if this was going in any game and you're kind of out looking at it at this scale you're not going to notice especially after we painted it you're not going to see those edges unless you get in really close and even then once we paint it up you probably won't notice okay so this is good enough so the next thing we can do is attach these two halves together and weld them and then we're gonna have to unwrap it and then we're gonna add spheres for the eyes so we can add the spheres but I think this time what we'll do is make spherified boxes for the eyes and we'll add those instead so that everything on the model is quads this time okay so we won't have the poles from the sphere we'll just have perfect quads then we won't have any issues when we unwrap there'll be no normal map issues or anything like that so I'm going to take this half, just unfreeze it. So if we hit no, okay, so last time I hit yes when that came up, if we hit no, it'll keep the layer frozen. Okay, so that's what I should have done the first time. So just so you see the difference, if you're unfreezing something that's in a different layer, when you hit unfreeze all, it asks, this will unfreeze all objects. Do you want to unfreeze all layers as well? You can click no. Okay, so these layers are still frozen. Now this half is an instance, so we can't attach it yet. So just take it and convert it to editable poly. And then we can attach. So the other thing we could do though, is we could have attached the eyes first and flipped it, but I'll show you how you can mirror the eyes later. So we'll take this side and we'll attach the other side. Okay, now that they're attached, we can weld the verts back down the middle, and that will fix that seam. So I'm going to hit F to go to the front view. <clears throat> you can see I've messed up a little bit here, where I've accidentally pushed past the symmetry line, probably when I was using soft selection. So what I usually do is just take all the verts down the middle. You can hit Alt-X to make sure you have them all. And if you use the scale tool, you can just scale them in towards each other in the X axis. That'll flatten them out. Then I'll hit Alt X again. And then I'm going to open up Weld Settings. And because the verts are on top of each other, you can right click on this to set it back to zero and just tap the up arrow once. It's not going to change the value because we're measuring in inches, but it's tapping it up enough that it's welding all these verts. And you can see the number change. Okay, so that's a small threshold that will only affect these verts. And then if you click OK, you can double check this again. If you turn off edges, there's no seam. So hit P and Z to zoom. So the last thing to do now is we need to unwrap it. We need to add the eyes. And then we need to set up the rig and skin it. And then after that point, we could take this in to Substance Painter, Mudbox, whatever, and we could paint it up, or we could sculpt detail and extract normal maps. And then we can come back here and apply it and then tweak the skinning if it's stretching at all.
Okay, so we'll go ahead and add the eyes. But again, I'm gonna create the eyes from a box this time. So maybe I'll just make this 0.3 by 0.3 by 0.3 so it's square. And you can use the same segments. So we can go with six and six. And then if we spherify this, it should be nice and round. And then if we end up subdividing this all later, if you're doing renders in here and doing close-ups, you might want to subdivide the mesh. Then this will subdivide with a quad mesh instead of the sphere that has the points or poles on either end. Okay, so that's good. You can convert that to editable poly. You can center the pivot point for this. So effect pivot only, center to object. And then I'll also change the smoothing groups on this. You can put this in smoothing group two, but we might have to change it after we attach everything. It doesn't matter. It could actually be all in group one because they're never actually welded together. So I'll hit clear all, assign that to group one. And then just check. That's how smooth the eye looks at this point. So I'm going to take this eye and move it up. And I'll just move it in, place it where I want it. This is where you can use your reference images to try to get that lined up. Okay, so if you look here, you can zoom in. There's two big eyes here. There's two big eyes at the top. There's four there. And then two little ones here. So you can put however many eyes you want in there. But I'm going to do something like that. If you want to scale it down, just select the element. Scale it down in the middle. And I'll hold shift to make a copy. And I'm just going to set them up on the one side for now. And then I'll show you how you can mirror them to the other side. Okay, so these ones are kind of up on the head like this. Let's make sure they stick out enough so they actually show up. Something like that. And yeah, I'll go a little further out. Why not? And then I'll hold shift and make the little ones underneath. So I'll scale this down. Just remember to scale from the middle so it scales equally. Get something like that. Push this pretty close to the middle and then make sure it sticks out enough. Okay, so you have something like that. Okay, so the trick to mirroring this over now is you can take this one here, just attach the other two. So now they're all attached as one piece. If you go to Hierarchy, Effect Pivot Only, just right click on Select and Move and reset the pivot to the center of the X axis. Okay, so if you do that, and turn off effect pivot only, you can mirror this. So if you use mirror and make it a copy, you can copy this over to the exact position on the opposite side, and then you have your eyes. So we can attach the eyes. Uh, we did not unwrap the eyes, so let's just check out what that unwrap looked like because it was based on a box. I'm going to add the unwrap UVW modifier to one set here and open the editor. This is this should already be unwrapped, but let's just check the texture checker pattern. So it's taking these sides and it's unwrapping it like a box. So it's pretty much flattened mapped each side. I don't plan on painting anything crazy on here. I'm just gonna make it all one color. So this is perfectly fine. Okay, so the auto map is fine. Just all these different uh, sections are overlapping in here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Again, it's just going to be a solid color, so that's totally fine. Convert that back to editable poly. So now you can take the spider and you can attach the eyes. Just like that. Okay, so if you want, you can add a different material to them. So if I want to change the color just for fun while we're in here. Let's change it to something like this. 
Oops, set that back to zero. If you're using a standard material, it can make it a bit shiny by bumping up the specular and glossiness. If you're using a physical material, it'd be the roughness, the metallic. And then if I want to apply that just to the eyes, you can select the eyes as elements. And you can assign material to selection. And it'll be on there when I deselect. Okay, so there you go. It's creepy. All right. So that's our spider modeled. We've named it spider. Now we can save the file. I'm going to save as. Hit plus, and now we can unwrap this. And once it's unwrapped, we can set up the rig. Okay, so just make sure you save it, and then we can go from here. Okay, so we'll move into the unwrap. Um, we'll try to keep the unwrap fairly straightforward and simple, just so we just want to be able to paint this thing up. Um, we'll be able to take it in the substance painter or mud box, like I was saying. I turn on the edges here so you can kind of think about how you would divide this up and where you want to hide seams if you need to hide them. Um, essentially I probably could take the whole thing and split it in half and just flatten it out like that but I'm going to go ahead and separate the legs and I'll split the legs in half. Um, we could also try to split the legs open through down one seam in the middle and flatten it out but I'm going to cut each one in half and then I'll separate the back and front and cut them in half and just peel them open. And then these spheres are already unwrapped and again we're just going to paint a flat color on them so I'm just going to leave them the way they are. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add the unwrap UVW modifier and we're going to turn on a couple things at the top here. So we're going to start selecting by edge. We'll turn off ignore back facing and we'll turn on symmetrical geometry. Okay, so this will allow us to have mirror mode turned on when we select our seams. And then if I scroll down here under peel, I'm going to be selecting and editing seams, but we'll come back to that. Under configure, we're going to turn off map seams so we don't see the default green map seams. And now we can I'm going to pull this over one just to expand our windows here so you can see them better. So I'm going to start selecting edges that I want to cut out. So the back here, you can, depending on what you plan on painting on here, you're going to have to make decisions as to where you're hiding seams. I could cut this right in the middle, but I'm going to hide this seam a little lower. And I'll just flatten this out from the bottom here. And I'm going to hold control and add this corner edge here and then hold control and double click around the neck of the spider. And that should grab everything there. And then we can use this button here to convert edge selection to seam. Okay, so that's now separated the back from the rest of the spider. And I have a top and bottom I can flatten out. Okay, when I flatten these out because of the curve, I could add seams going up the corner to help it spread out a bit better if I wanted a perfectly straight unwrap. But this will be good enough for how I intend to paint this. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go around and start separating the legs. So I'll separate them right from the base here. So I'm going to double click the inner edge loops on each leg. So one of the reasons I'm separating the legs instead of unwrapping it all with the body is to try to um, utilize more of the UV space when I pack this stuff together. Okay, so you can right click and isolate selection and it'll temporarily hide everything else. So I've got the middle edge loop for each leg that I'm going to convert to a seam. And then I'll go around each of these and I'll try to create a seam where I can split this. So you could hide this a little lower on the leg. So instead of going from the middle like this, I could go from here. So I'm going to do this the quickest way I can. I'm going to double click. Okay, so I'm going to be flattening this part and the top separate from each other. And I'm going to try to do each of these legs at the same time as far as creating the seam. So right now I'm just focused on double clicking these 
And then I'm going to go around and remove the edges I don't want. Okay, so that wraps around, that should wrap around the toe of the spider. If you go to the very end of each one, I'm going to use the magnifying glass to help me control the zoom here. Okay, so I want that to stay selected. I'm going to have this come up like this on each toe. So I'm just trying to make sure, yeah, and I've missed this edge loop here, so I'll add that in. Make sure that this connects across the toes so that it flattens the top and bottom. Okay, so I'm holding Alt and the middle mouse button to try to rotate here. And it's rotating around the middle of the model. So I'm able to get to each toe like that. Okay, so those sections are selected, but because I double clicked, I'm going to want to go in and hold Alt and just deselect the areas that I didn't want to add in here. Okay, so this should come up and it should end at the blue seam where we are, we're, right where we're separating the leg from the body. That's where we want this to stop. So right now I'm just holding Alt, deselecting. You can click and drag if you want to try to speed it up. And then when you look at this, when you step back and look, all these edges end at the border around the leg and the body. Okay, so that was just a quick way to do that. So I'll convert this to a seam. Now, all I have to do now is make sure that the top and bottom of the head can be unwrapped. So you can see right here where I have this edge accidentally added in. I can just continue this around. But let's see where I'm going to separate this from. So maybe, again, it depends how you're going to paint this. But maybe I'll separate it from here. Okay, so what I'm going to do this time, you can use point to point seam as well. So if you click on point to point seam, you can click from one edge to the next edge in the row. And you can select it like that. So I'm going to make sure that all these sections between the legs here are also connected up. So it's going to split it along this edge loop. So I'm just trying to carefully make sure I connect these up properly. So if you see I'm going through the middle edge loop that's connecting the legs and then up in here just trying to rotate under. Um, I should come from this one and up. This is going to create a weird shape in here, but I'll see what happens. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back and try to fix it. Okay, so this is just because I'm trying to keep this seam lower on the head. Okay, so that would be everything set up. So I'm going to turn that off. And we'll start selecting and flattening. If things aren't looking very good, we'll go back in and change where we've added these seams. So when you click on Polygon, you can select a polygon anywhere on here. If you hit Expand Selection to Seams, it should stop at the seam that we've created. If it bleeds through, then you've probably missed adding a seam, and you'll have to fix that. But for now, I want to go through each section. And I'm going to hit the quick peel, which will just peel this and open it up like this. And then I'm going to hit reset to throw it all back together. And you can see it in the middle there. So that's the head, the top of the head flattened out. You can keep this open while you do this, but I'm going to do each section one at a time so I can see what's going on. So the bottom belly area, or the underneath the head, do the same thing. Quick peel, reset peel. You can probably just hit reset peel, but I'm just making sure to do it in order like this. So that just peels everything apart and then puts it all back together. And you can do this by selecting multiple pieces, but I'm just right now, I have symmetry on, so it's going to do both sides. Just want to make sure I've unwrapped the legs properly. You could also go in and add edge loops at the knuckles to try to separate it, just to straighten this out. But again, this is going to be fine for the way I intend on painting it. 
I'm not going to be putting crazy detail in here. So we're going to quick peel and reset, do underneath, expand, quick peel, reset. So when you're just doing a basic unwrap like this, it can be pretty quick. But it just depends on what your plans are for the model. If you're doing like a tune shaded or some kind of stylized game texture, this might be exactly all you need to do. If you're doing a more high-end photorealistic set of textures, um, this might not suffice. You might have to really straighten out these UVs better. Okay, so the eyes are already unwrapped, so just remember that. But what's going to happen now is I'm going to end up packing these all together, and it's going to it's going to move each section away, which is fine. Again, I don't I don't really think that's going to matter for this. So what I'm going to do though here is select everything, and we're going to pack this together. So we're going to go down and use. I'm going to set the padding down to one. So there's pack custom and then there's pack normalize. If you hit pack normalize, it's going to try to pack everything together and try to keep the scales relative to the other UV clusters. So if you turn on texture checker, it'll show this in the viewport and you can hit F2 to see through this. But then just to really check this out, if you scale this up, you can look around the model to see if your checker pattern is badly distorted anywhere. Okay, so again, for me, this is going to be perfect. But if you have any error areas that have really bad stretching, and you're going to see the seam here, the only time this will be an issue is potentially with a normal map. But in most cases, it'll cover itself up. And again, around here, there's no weird distorting. It might be a little bit wavy in some of the more creased, curved areas, but for the most part, it's not bad. You can see down here, this is just because it's kind of a sphere area, so it forms a bit of a pocket. And I could split these off so that they flatten out better, but when we paint on this, we're, we're not going to notice these wavy lines. Okay, so again, we're custom painting, so it's not going to be any kind of an issue for us. We just want to make sure everything's evenly unwrapped here. So one thing you can do, it doesn't matter, but you could uh, reorganize some of this. So if you wanted to, you could take like this cluster here, which is, oops, make sure I'm selecting by polygon. Okay, so that is this section here. If you want to rotate this around, you can rotate it like that. And then when you update it in the viewport, you can see the letters and numbers are facing the right direction. Again, it might not matter, but if you want to just keep things neat and organized, that could help. Same thing with a section like this. Okay, so you can see this one isn't quite straight to begin with. So I'm just going to straighten it out in the view and then rotate it. So it looks something like that. And then we'll do this one too, just straighten it out. You can, you can tell which area is the back. So I could go through and try to straighten all the legs out, but again, it's not really going to matter. I just want this to pack itself together here. So I'm going to hit Pack Normalize one more time. That fits everything in here. And this will be good enough for us to go and paint in Substance Painter or Mudbox or whatever. Okay, so this way we're not spending too much time in here. Okay, so I'm going to close that. This is unwrapped. I'm going to save the file again, and then we're going to set up the rig. Okay, so next we're going to set up our rig using CAT, and we'll be able to export this into Unreal Engine afterwards. So let's right click and end isolate, 
and we're going to create our cat rig in its own layer. So I'm going to go over to the create panel and we'll go to helpers and this is where you can find the cat objects. So under helpers in the drop down menu hit cat objects, click on cat parent and we'll create a new layer first so let's open up our layer explorer and I'm just going to hit create new layer and we'll just call this uh, cat rig. Make sure it's the active layer and then we can just close this for now. But in the cat parent, we're going to go down and use the spider rig, which we're going to modify for the legs. So if you click spider, you can just click and drag in the middle and it creates that spider rig. And I'm going to right click on select and move. Just make sure it's all centered. And then I'll go to the top view and I'll move the rig up here. So I probably should move the spider back to the rig so that everything's centered. So I'm actually going to do that. Okay, so we'll do it like this. We'll take this and we'll move this guy back here. Do it something like that. Okay, so we could also, at this point, we could take our spider mesh and effect pivot only, center to the object. And if that spider mesh is in the center, it should line up to the rig, if that's in the center. We don't really need our reference images at this point, unless you're using them for painting. So I'm going to hide the reference images and just focus on this. So if you select the base, you can hit P to go to perspective. You can go into the modify panel and you can change the size by uh, adjusting the cat units ratio. So if you need to resize this at all, use this. Don't scale the bones. Scaling the bones would be a bad thing to do because it'll mess up the transform and it'll mess up the hierarchy of the rig when we're animating. So we're not going to be scaling any part of this rig. Anything you want to change the size of, you're going to select and use the properties here in the Modify panel. So if I have to resize a leg, I'm going to select it and I'm going to use the properties here. Or while it's in setup mode, you can actually move the joints back and forth. So for now, I just want to make sure that this lines up. So I'm going to try to move the spider up like this. Just get everything lined up as close as I can. Okay, so the head, this area here, we can actually, it doesn't matter if the head reaches the top, we just need to make sure it's pretty much in the center and make sure that these two sections, the front and the back, are lined up in the middle here. Okay, so this part here should pivot from there and this part here is just from the middle, so that's fine. These mandibles here, so if you click on these, you can, if you plan on modeling those in, you can keep them there, but I'm just going to delete them because I'm not using them. And again, if you want to resize the head, you can select it and you can adjust the width, the length, and the height. So the next thing to do is to go through and set up these legs, and I'm going to try to do this quickly. You can spend more time on this and getting these legs accurate, but I'm going to try to set up one and we're going to copy and paste. So I'm going to make it easy for us to set this up. Okay, so the first thing to do is go through and take all your IK targets and move them over. Okay, so IK again stands for inverse kinematics. We're going to move this over and you can see when inverse kinematics is turned on, the entire chain of bones is linked to this between this IK target and the base bone. So when we're setting this up we're going to want to set it up in FK but we want to move these IK targets first. So if you have to adjust any of the legs or rotate them <coughs> you can do that by selecting the bone and rotating it. Once you move these over I'm going to go through each one and I'm going to totally ignore this side for now. We'll mirror paste the bones over after. But for this side, I'm going to take these, go to the motion panel, 
and I want to hit match IK to FK on each one okay and I'll show you why in a minute if I switch this one which I haven't matched yet to FK you can see it goes back to where the FK was the last time we moved the bone if I hit match K IK to FK and switch this to FK it will stay right where the IK is so I'm hitting match IK to FK and then just slide these all over to FK okay so for setup mode it's easier to set the rig up if it's an FK now we can go through and individually rotate the bones they're not stuck to the IK targets so I'm gonna hit save so also remember um, we need to have eight bones for the legs for each of these joints to line up and right now if we click on this and go to the modify panel we have three bones so I'm gonna set up one of them with eight bones and then I'll copy and paste this around so I'm gonna punch in eight and hit enter it's gonna drop these bones down here like this so I'm just gonna go through kinda of rotate them out so that they're straight and then I'm gonna have to start shifting these back to line up with the leg okay so each of these I'm gonna select and under in the modify panel under width and depth I'm gonna put in two and two just to make these bones smaller so they fit inside the leg the other bones on the spider have a custom shape to them these are just gonna be shaped like boxes which is the default for the cat bones okay so now I'm gonna go through and try to line this up so I'll start with this first bone and I'm gonna line it up underneath here you can switch your axis to local and I'm just gonna try to get underneath here and line this up in the middle and line it up at the base here where the joint needs to bend from okay so I'm also gonna try to rotate it so that it's facing the right direction so the middle edge loop on the bone should be going straight down the leg and then I'll go to the next joint or the next bone and I'm gonna move this pivot point over here okay so this should be pivoting from about here so you want your pivot point right in the middle edge loop and you want to try to do that between the top and the side view of your leg so when I rotate I keep hitting Z to zoom in just line it up as close as you can get it so I'm gonna take this one and we're going to this joint here I'm gonna hit Z try to zoom in okay so this one's gonna be right here in the middle of that edge loop <laughs> and I'm gonna push that over in this top part it's gonna come back over here then I'll just go I'm gonna do these other ones kind of quick because I just want to get the bones close to where they're supposed to be so that one should be there that one should be there this one will be here this one will be here this one will be at the end and we have to rotate this one out so that will go to the end of the claw as you can see they're all shifted off here to make sure that this bone is rotated over and make sure it's centered okay once you get it centered you can go to the next bone and hit Z again to zoom in and try to get this in the middle edge loop between the top and bottom or the top and the side So same thing with this one. Once you've done this a few times, you can definitely do it quicker and quicker each time. And again, once we set this one up, we can copy it around for the rest of the rig. Let's try to rotate these bones so that they're facing the direction 
of the leg. So just rotate that one in. Let's just straighten these ones out before we start pushing them around. If you need to hit Alt X, you can do that to put the bone into see through mode. Just line it up like that and then hit Alt X again. So this one will hit Alt X on that. Just shift it over. Maybe rotate it a little bit, but this one you can go to the depth or the length and push it out past the claw. And then once you have that lined up, you can hit Alt X again. That out there. Okay, so that is set up for that leg. I'm just going to double check here and make sure everything's in the middle. Looks like it's a little bit off. Okay, so once you have that set up, you're going to save it. So I'm going to hit save and I'm going to go through and I'm going to copy and paste. Okay, so before I do, I'm just looking over here and I'm noticing that these are a little bit twisted. I want to straighten these out. So if I, if you rotate these bones at this point, okay, so these are this is kind of off. So I want the bone to follow the leg properly. But if you do this, it's going to throw off the entire leg. So you want to be very careful as you're doing this. To try to keep them straight as you go through. Otherwise, you're going to have to keep going through and tweaking. So I'm just going to do one last check here. Really want to try to make sure everything's centered, especially in this view. Make sure it's right in the middle of that middle edge loop so that it bends properly. Make sure it's in the middle edge loop here. Okay, so you can see that one got shifted quite a bit when I moved it and rotated it. These ones have to get moved way over here now. Just hit Alt X to try to get that right in the middle. So I'm fussing over this a little bit because I really want this to be straight. I don't want this to be all crooked. And I really want it to line up down the middle of the edge loops of the spider leg. It's going to make the skinning process easier if these bones line up perfect. Okay, so hit Alt X on these. All right. Okay, I'm going to hit save again, and I'm going to call that done, and we're going to go ahead and copy this. So I'm going to select the first bone here, I'm going to hit copy, select the next bone, and hit paste. Okay, so that's going to paste this over. I have that bone selected still, so I'm just going to rotate it out, and you'll see the whole leg bone will rotate with it. So if I can get that rotated into the right direction here. Then I can double click this to select all the bones and move them over. And I'm going to do this in the view this time. So I want this to be set to view. And I'll just shift this right over like that. Okay, so if you're rotating, rotate from the first bone. And you should try to rotate in the view this time because we don't want to be moving it up and down. And you should be able to pretty much line this up. You might have to tweak it a bit, but it should be pretty close. You can see here it's off because probably when I rotated it. And then if you want to go through and tweak to make sure each section lines up, then you can switch it back to local. And I'm just going to pull this down. 
Try to line it up at the base here where it's supposed to pivot from. Hit Alt X if you want to see through it. This one here is going to have to come down. And once we get this side set up, we can mirror paste to the other side of the rig. I'm just going to shift these over so that I can get through this part quickly. So a little bit tedious trying to set this up and then we'll have to do the skinning but once we get these set up and we mirror them over it'll go quite a bit quicker in the end. Hit Alt X on those. Let's try to make sure that this is centered again. <clears throat> so you can save as you do each leg, just in case. So I'm just going to keep hitting save at this point. This one is a little messed up, so I'm going to move it over. And I'll do the same thing. Copy, select that one, paste, rotate it out in the view. And you should be able to shift it over if you double click the whole thing and I'm gonna hit undo I don't want to move it locally I want to move it in the view so it goes straight across and just rotate this until I can get it lined up So I just have to move it back a bit. Okay, so that one's pretty close. Could go through and tweak it. Okay, I'm going to call that one done so we can move on. I'm going to click this one, copy, paste, rotate it out, double click, move it in the view, and then try to get it lined up in there. Okay, so we're almost there. <clears throat> Once we get this part done, we can mirror everything over. Then we just have to apply the skin modifier. All right, so a little bit tedious, a little bit time consuming, but we got through it. <clears throat> So now all we have to do for the other side is click on the bone on this side, which you'll see is the right leg. If you copy, select the same bone on the other side, it's for the left leg, the spider's left leg, then you can paste mirror. Okay, that will automatically set that leg up. So we don't have to go through all that again. So I'm going to do that for each leg. Copy, paste mirror, and then just like that, the rig is set up. Alright, so gonna hit save 
save as, hit the plus. That is everything rigged and unwrapped. Now we just have to skin it. So once we have it skinned, this character is done. We just have to, or this spider is done. We just have to take the spider mesh into Substance Painter or a mud box and paint it. Okay, to skin this, this is actually going to be a fairly easy creature to skin. If we select the mesh, we're going to go ahead and add, we have the unwrap in here, we'll just leave it there. We're going to add the skin modifier on top of that. Make sure you don't have anything selected under editable poly. So if you have any sub-objects selected, it's going to apply these to the sub-object that's selected. We want everything on top of editable poly being applied to the object. So make sure there's nothing selected there or skin won't work. So now for skin, under bones, we're going to click add. And you can sort this by layer. And you can turn off everything up here except for display bones. So we'll only see the bones for the cat rig. And then if you expand that layer that we put the cat rig in, we're going to select the first bone, scroll down, hold shift, select all the rest of the bones. And then you're going to hit select. It's going to add them in here. And then we can start adjusting the envelopes and the skin weights or the vertex weights. So if you select the base of the cat rig, we're going to go to the motion panel and we'll add a cat motion layer so we can test the skinning with a default walk cycle. So hold your mouse button down, choose the option at the bottom with the little guy running. This is the cat motion layer. So just hit play to turn it on. Just toggle this on to play. And then you'll see it has a default walk cycle built in. And you can see the skin is messed up right now. So we'll be able to scrub through this to check, or, uh, test the skin. But I'm going to select the mesh for the spider. And I'm going to right click and isolate it. Okay, so now I'm just seeing the spider and it looks kind of mangled right now. So two things I know for sure are going to be causing that right off the bat are these two big bones for the body. So we're going to select this, go into skin, turn on edit envelopes and you'll see the envelopes for all the bones. Okay, so the envelopes, if we select one on the leg here and just look, envelope is just a line for representing the bone underneath here. Okay, so each envelope has a yellow line in the middle and it has a point on either end that you can select. Okay, when you're editing these, you want it to be set to local. If you needed to resize the bone or the envelope for the bone, I should say, you could select the point at either end and you can move it in and out. But what we're focusing on right now are the capsules. There's the inner capsule, which is pure red. This is the strongest value. And then there's the outer capsule, which is like a burgundy red and this is like the fall off so if you adjust this it's like a fall off and it, it's kind of like saw selection the further you push this out the more it's going to reach onto other verts and there's a color value that goes from gray to blue to yellow to orange to red red is a hundred percent gray is zero uh, blue or light blue is like 0 0.01 and we're going to see that when we use the weight tool as well. So the first thing to do usually is to just go through and adjust the outer capsules. So these bigger bones, you can see the outer capsule is huge. I just need to select the point at the end of, or either end of the capsule. Okay, so you'll see this circle around the capsule and you can click on the points. Okay, so if you kind of look at this, you can see where the circle meets the capsule. There's a point there. You can just move that in and that will take a lot of the weight off of the rest of the spider. Okay, so these capsules should pretty much just cover around the area that you're trying to get them to affect. So th in this case, I can take the end of the envelope and move it back in. And I could take this side as well and move it back. I want the capsule to kind of encompass just this section of the body. There's some areas that I'm not going to be able to control the capsule properly, and that's when we're going to go in and use the weight tool. Essentially, you could skip the whole capsule process and go right to the weight tool, but I like to go through and just 
adjust these first. Okay, so this one, the bone is going the opposite direction. So I'm just pulling these capsules in until they're tight around the area that they're supposed to be affecting. So this is the head area. And obviously if I go too far, it's going to skip out on parts that I need affected. And again, I'm just moving these out like this. Okay, so this is definitely going to be easier to control with the weight tool. But at least if you have a quick look at the envelopes, you can see. If I go into the leg envelopes, they're probably also too big. In some cases, you can just use the envelopes to do a quick skin. There's also, if you go in here, there's weight properties and there's a weight solver. So there's two modes here, voxel and heat map, and you could try them both. And they both have resolutions that you can crank up. And these will pretty much auto skin your character. And they work better if the character has um, a denser mesh, I find. But we're going to manually adjust this using the weight tool. Okay, so I'm just checking these areas real quick, pulling some of the weight off. Okay, so you can see how much that was affecting the eye there. This leg should not be pulling on the eye at all. Shouldn't be pulling on the neighboring leg either. Okay, so just some minor adjustments there, and you can see it's a little bit better. But now we're going to use the weight tool. We're only going to focus on one side because at the end there is mirror mode where we can go in and we can use mirror mode to copy and paste both the envelope settings, which we've just been adjusting, and we can also copy and paste the weight settings that we're about to change. So we'll get into that now. I'm going to turn on vertices and I'm going to go to the back side of the spider. So if you scrub through, because of the animation, we can kind of see where the leg separates from the body there. And we can see where it's pulling on the leg, and we don't want that. So I'm going to go down to the weight tool, which is the little wrench here. If you open up the weight tool, we're going to leave that handy here. At the top, you need to make sure that you turned on vertices, so just make sure that's turned on. And then we'll be able to select the verts like this. So if I select vertices around the mesh, I can set the weights with the weight values here. Or you can set weight, scale weight, by tapping up and down. So that'll add weight or remove it. In this case, I know this needs to be set to 1, so I'm going to set it to 1. I'm also going to change my rectangular selection tool to the lasso selection tool so that I can just kind of draw the selection around like this. So I know this whole area in here should be set to 1. So that fixes that. Everything up here should be set to 0. So you can select all that and hit 0, and it should 0 at the weight. If you see weight like this, where you click on the vert and you hit 0 and nothing happens, it means that there's no weight being assigned to the bone below it. So for something like this, I would need to go in and I need to add the weight back to the proper bone. Okay, so we'll go through the legs in a minute. We're going to have to fix these as well. But I'm just double checking that this is not leaking up onto the body too much. Okay, so this whole area here should be zero. Again, you don't really have to worry about this side because we're going to use the mirror tool after. But this whole back end here should all be set to 1. But this side here, you can add that if it's bothering you, but we're going to end up mirroring this. Okay, so the front, I'm going to click on this as well. So you can still adjust the envelopes, but once you start moving or assigning the weights, the envelopes will stop working. Okay, so you kind of want to adjust the envelopes first if you're going to use them. And then once you start using the weight tool, the envelopes are disabled. Okay, so now that I'm using the weight tool next, I'm going to go through here and just select areas that should be set to 1 for that bone. 
You can also select an element, so the eyes should be 100% weighted to that bone. So if I want to select that as an element, I can go up here and turn on Select Element. And then when I click on a vertice for the eye, it selects the whole thing, and I can just set it to 1. Okay, so again, if I can't set it to 1 all the way like this, I can keep tapping this and force it. But chances are it's being pulled by something else. Okay, so normally you hit 1 and it automatically sets it. But I'm just going to try to force these in here. But yeah, there's other bones that are probably pulling on these that I should remove the weight from. So here, I could go under here and try to carefully select the body down here. Most of this should be set to 1, so not that far out. That happened because I forgot to turn off element, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'll go through here. Okay, so when I hit 1, it should be setting it to 100%. So I'm just going to check to see what's going on with the other legs stuff here. So the first thing to do to fix the weight on the legs would be to select the top bone here. And you can kind of scrub through a bit until they separate. But this bone should not be pulling on this leg at all. So this should all be set to zero. And same thing on that side. So <laughs> just going to go through here and double check each one. So this envelope here, I'm just going to make sure it's not pulling on these sections here. So just grab these verts and hit zero because it shouldn't be pulling on them at all. Uh, I'll check this one here. The ones closer to the body are going to be the ones that need the most work. As you start working your way up the leg, it'll get easier and easier to set these weights. So in this area here is where most of the cleanup will have to come in. So I'm just checking the weights around here. Okay, that leg should not be picking up any of this either shouldn't be pulling on front of the face. It's going to double check this again. Let's make sure. See, I've got something messed up here. So I'm going to go back to element again. Just double check the eyes are all set to 1. Again, I don't have to do this side. I'm going to mirror it, but since I'm in here, I'm doing it anyways. And while I'm on the body, I'm going to turn off element. And I'm just going to select most of the outer edge loops on these legs here, set them to zero, because the body shouldn't really be pulling that far out. Okay, so the body can blend a little bit into these legs, but for the most part, it shouldn't be going past this edge loop here. So I'm just going to right click and end isolate. Oops, end isolate. And I'm going to put the rig back in the default pose. So I'm going to turn off the animation. And I'm going to right click and isolate again. And I'm just going to try to get the body and stuff sorted out a bit better while it's in the flat view here. So I'm just keeping that weight tool open. So that back part. So remove weight that shouldn't be there and add it back to here. Just trying to get this whole section picked for the body. So at some point you might have to get in really close here and just try to get close to the edge. So we basically want it red up until this loop. 
So this should all be red. And then it'll start blending into the leg. So the loops here between the leg should be set to one. So I'm just going to try to select these all the way down here. And then everything will blend to the legs from that point. There's also a blend button here, which we'll look at when we get into the legs a bit more. Okay, at this point, I'm totally abandoning that side because I'm going to rely on the weight or the uh, mirror tool to get that. And yeah, this section here should be blended a bit better with the body here. So these averts here could probably be about 0.5 blended back. Shouldn't be pulling on this part at all. That should be zero. This should all be zero, but we'll use the mirror tool for that. Okay, so for the most part, this back part of this backbone here is pretty much done. This bone here is pretty close. It needs to be blended up here a little bit better. Probably going to set that to 0.5 or maybe even 0.75. And then coming back around here, this should all be one. So I'm going to try to select this all through here. And set it to one. Yeah, actually this loop, I'm going to hit that whole loop there, set that to one. <clears throat> okay, we're getting close. So for the body, I'm going to say that's close enough. So if we get into the legs, I'm going to go through the edge loops for the legs. So I'm going to start with this inner one. This one here, starting from here, if I hit loop, this bone, this inner edge loop should be about 0.5. And it should not be pulling on that part at all, so that should be zero. should also not be pulling on that leg at all, so that should be also zero. All of this should be zero on that bone. So I'm just going to double check each one of these to make sure they're not pulling on each other. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay, start from here again. Okay, so I just went through and double checked that they're not pulling on each other. And I'll have to go to the next envelope after this. Okay, so from here on this inside loop, I'm going to hit loop. That should be one. This should be one. And this should be one. And then going into the next loop should be 0.5. <clears throat> okay, so we'll control the rest of this. This should kind of blend in here, but I'm going to go to the next envelope in a minute. So this leg it pretty much will be the same pattern. So from here, so this first inner edge loop up against the body should be 0.5. And then from here, it should be 1. This should be 1. And this should be one. If you want to double check this center edge loop, you can always grab it and hit 0.5 on it. And if you're careful, you can probably click and drag around the whole section there and set it to one. And then you just have to do 0.5 on these 
shared middle edge loops. So yeah, this is definitely why skinning is the least favorite part for most people. A little bit tedious to go through all this, but once you have a well-skinned character, you can have that character to use forever. Okay, so these next groups here, I'm going to try to speed this up a bit at this point. I'm going to zero that out. Zero this out. This also, also shouldn't be pulling up here. Let's go to this next one. That should not be pulling up there. All the little amounts of weight on the bones so that should not be affecting other parts in the mesh. This will cause some odd distortion. So you need to make sure you get that out of there. If I go to the next one, you can see as we start going down the leg, it's going to be, because they're so spread out, they're probably not affecting the other legs anymore. So it's really just this part here that's tough to do. But we just about have it sorted out. I'm going to do these joints. Okay, so these joints, again, these have shared edge loops here. But basically, we just want to grab this loop here and hit one, and this loop here and hit one. Okay, so this loop here and this loop here would be 0.5 on that bone. So I'll do the same thing here. Hit loop 1, loop 1. You can actually just lasso select two verts together to hit loop. Loop 1, loop 1. Let's do this one here. Okay, so just like that. And then if you go to the next bone, we can work our way back again. So basically, this should not be affecting this part here. That should be zero. But the first loop on that side of the bone, this one here, should be one. And then in here, it starts to blend. So it's, all you should have to do for these ones is go through here and set this first loop to one. Okay, so again, where it's grabbing this part here, I want to set that to zero. And I should have double checked these ones because they're probably doing the same thing. Okay, so if you want to continue, you can keep going through here and doing this. Um, I know on these, it's going to have to be set to one in the middle. and the first edge loop on either side. You can see as you practice, you'll start getting quicker at this. So now I'm just using the lasso tool to grab the loops and it goes quicker. just repetitive
<clears throat> so we're getting pretty close here. Just going through each one of these. But you can see the pattern here. You can see as I'm doing this, you should be able to see which edge loops I'm grabbing because we have the three edge loops at each joint. So when I select the bone, I'm grabbing the edge loop on that side, making sure it's set to one. And then the middle edge loop will be blended to the next bone. Down here, we could probably leave it all blended. I'll just do this first one because it'll just kind of bend as the spider walks. So this is the last one that I'll change right here. Okay, so if we turn our animation back on, we're going to check this out. I'm going to end isolate and see how we've done. So look at the legs now that we've set that. Okay, so ignore that side. We haven't mirrored it yet, but <clears throat> these legs are now skinned pretty much perfect on this side. Because we took the time to go through with the weight tool and manually set the weights the way we purposely uh, put these edge loops in here, the mesh is sticking to the bones perfectly. So to mirror this, we're now going to turn that animation off again. You can take your spider, save your file, always save before you do something big like mirror. Go to the modify panel and you can turn on edit envelopes again, but we're going to go down here to mirror mode and if you you can see I was working on this side so it's going to be green to blue bones and green to blue verts so I'm gonna press paste green to blue bones first and then paste green to blue verts next and you can see how that cleans everything up and fixes it you can turn mirror mode off you can turn your animation on to check this out again and if you isolate the spider you can watch this move. Okay, so that's the spider pretty much rigged and skinned. So if there's anything sticking out, you can go on with the weight tool and clean it up. Um, you can try to blend weights a little bit better in the creases here. Okay, so if there's a section that's kind of popping like that, then I'm gonna go in with the weight tool and I'm gonna to try to figure out what's going on. Could be this here, it's set too hard. So if I turn this back on, I can probably grab loops like this and you can try blending. Blend usually does a pretty good job. And you could go along each joint and probably do that. So this one, grab the loop just tap blend a few times and then you can really get this working perfect okay so if you do that oh, there's a little mistake right there and here whoops Double check some of these spots here. So if you do this final cleanup like this, then you can mirror your weights again. But we can also make sure that we have the whole spider set to smoothing group one. Because the smoothing groups could also be causing distortion issues if they're not set properly. But <clears throat> if we scrub through there now after blending, you can see it looks a lot better in there. So I'm going to call this pretty much done at this point. I'm just going to end, isolate, save again. I'm just going to save over top of that one. 
turn off the animation and we'll do the mirror one more time so in skin turn on edit envelopes mirror green to blue bones green to blue verts turn that off and then you can do one more check but let's go into let's just double check something go down to editable poly select all the polygons on the spider make sure they're all set to smoothing group one okay so we should have already done that before but I'm just double checking and then turn this off go back to skin and everything should still work as long as you turned off polygons and then you can check this one more time if you want to isolate the spider again you can isolate it and you can see it's working okay so now all we really need to do if you're done with the blending is we can export this for painting and we can tweak the animation and then we can send it to Unreal Engine. So I'm going to end this video here and I'll create separate videos for painting and bringing it into Unreal. So don't forget to save and then that'll be it for now.